All right, now what's going on, guys? Welcome back to New Stuff TV, the Untechnical Tech Channel. I'm your host, Antoine. I got Boom on the right and Boom on the left, Richardson, because today we're gonna be checking out the Boom Box 3. This is the new kid on the block, the Boom Box 3 versus the Sony SRS XG500. So this is Sony's big bad boy as far as like portable Bluetooth speakers, and this is JBL's bad boy as far as uh, portable Bluetooth speakers. Yes, they do bigger, but those are called party speakers. These are their portable Bluetooth speakers. Let's just clear that up because people be wanting me to do all kinds of comparisons between different types of speakers. Let's just keep it portable, bro. Portable Bluetooth speakers. Now, since last week, I've been really enjoying the Boombox 3, specifically in my garage for my workout speaker. I don't turn it up like all the way because like I like my hearing. <laughs> I'm usually keeping it at about 30, 40%, you know, that way my neighbors don't, you know, have to complain, but I can still get my jam on. I really enjoyed the sound. I like the clarity, I like the highs, I like the mids, and the basses. To me, it's pretty much the same as the Boombox 2, which I was previously using in the same location in my house. Outdoors, I think it's a great uh, performer. Indoors, I think it performs extremely well. But in the case of indoors, I think that's where Sony probably shines. I mean, and that's just my personal opinion. The Sony speakers, uh, I actually use this Sony speaker in my house, uh, in my living room, and I've been really enjoying the XG300 in my bathroom. So Sony has actually taken over my house. As much crap as I talk about Sony, I don't understand it. Why the Sony, like my initial impressions of Sony products are never really that great. But after a couple of weeks, uh, maybe a month or so, they really just grow on me. And then I'm like, man, this shit is really good. Like, <laughs> and then I start using it. It takes over my house. So I got Sony in my house, JBL in my garage. But here's the thing. When you're the new kid on the block and when you cost $500, everybody wants to come at you, man. All the haters come out. Everybody wants to challenge you. So that's why we're here today with the Sony SRS XG300 pairing these up to, or we're not gonna pair them, we're gonna compare them. But first, Wilson and I, we got bills to pay. I got a kid in college, Wilson has like four babies mamas. Dude, I, I'm just saying, you know, you got a lot of babies mamas. So we got bills to pay. So while we're getting set up in the laboratory, I'm gonna need you guys to watch this short little ad from today's video sponsor. You know, I'm sitting here watching TV with subtitles, and it really does make me feel for people with hearing loss, especially when we get older in age and we've been jamming out to loud music our entire lives or working maybe in a machine shop or something. That's where Mirai comes in. Introducing the Mirai speaker. It's the world's first speech clarifying TV speaker. It's designed to enable those with mild to moderate hearing loss to better understand and enjoy TV viewing. So now we can forget about the subtitles. You can just turn them off and you don't have to read the entire time you're trying to enjoy your show. It has this really interesting audible wave technology. So you don't have to miss out on a word of your next FaceTime or video call with your family or friends. You just connect the Mirai speaker to your computer or iPad and enjoy the clarity of the conversation. The audible wave technology takes the frustration out of all the video calls. It's a simple plug and play setup. It doesn't have any Bluetooth or wireless connectivity, which makes it ideal for older folks or anyone who just wants to simplify the hassle of connecting to the TV. Just plug in the audio cable and you're all set. It comes with everything you need so you don't have to worry about going out to the store to get some wires. And right now you can get up to $419 off from the Indiegogo campaign, depending on which package you buy. Now I'm gonna get this thing set up real quick so I can turn off these subtitles and get back to my show. All right. That's more like it. Now I can hear those voices loud and clear, and I don't have to keep saying, Hey, Lucy, what did he say? <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all. Look, y'all keep being good to each other, and I'll see you when I see you. All right, boys and girls, let's get this underway. Wilson is still a little bit upset with me about putting his business out in the streets, but he's always in his feelings, so we just gonna move along with it. So first of all, let's talk about aesthetics. Man, they both look fantastic in their own way. Sony has decided to change things up with a more, mm, let's call it soft and homey and comfortable look with all of this mesh going all around the speaker and this nice convenient handle on the top with an all plastic design. However, JBL decided to continue with their updated aesthetic because all their other speakers look like this now. Uh, they, they decided to go ahead and run with that. The, they expanded the tramp stamp on the front and they gave it a sporty design because it's, it's a sporty kind of speaker, man. This thing looks like you're supposed to go do stuff. Um, you know, as far as the build quality, uh, I guess I'll kind of jump around a little bit. As far as the build quality, 
I feel build quality in the boom box. And it's not because it weighs probably five pounds more than the Sony speaker. I mean, the Sony speaker does have some weight. I would say this one probably weighs about 10 pounds. I haven't weighed it, but this one definitely weighs right at about 15 point something pounds. But where you get most of that build quality is the handle. The handle is clutch. I mean, it is a metal handle. In fact, I scratched it somehow and I got a little, little dent up here, man. So it's not a dent, it's just like a chip in the, in the, uh, the powder coating. So it's definitely a metal handle. It just feels like quality, man. I don't, matter of fact, I don't think you can get a better built speaker than a JBL portable speaker. But circling back to aesthetics, it's one of the major reasons why the Sonys live in my house. They just look more home friendly and they just blend into your home without standing out like a sore thumb. However, when I think about the decor in my house, this JBL speaker does not add up, man. It just does not belong in there. That's why I keep it out in the garage and I, I'm just gonna grab it if I wanna do some yard work or something. This speaker just, it just looks like it's made to do stuff. Sony also decided to give us a five hour edge on battery life, giving us 30 hours or up to 30 hours of battery life on the XG500, whereas you're getting 24 solid battery life out of the, uh, the Boombox 3, which is real solid, man. It's just that if you're all day like outside and stuff, you're gonna need that extra five hours. It will make the difference. The XG500 also edges out the Boombox 3 in battery care, because once you get into the app, you can go into power option and then scroll down just a little bit and you see where it says battery care? It suppresses the charge amount to approximately 90% when fully charged to extend the battery life. This way, after charging up a whole bunch of time, you don't actually degrade your battery. I've heard the complaints about the batteries, especially in the JBLs where after maybe two or three years, your battery just expired basically and won't hold a charge or sometimes won't even turn on. So Sony's definitely gonna edge you out in that category because it's going to extend the battery life. So if you like this speaker over the next three years, you should not have to replace it because the battery's dead. Now, since we're already in the Sony app, let's go ahead and take a look around in here. Let's go in the settings because that's where most of the speaker settings actually reside. We'll go into sound and I'll be honest with you, neither, neither one of these speakers actually has a very robust app. Uh, I have it set to uh, Sony's default clear audio plus, which basically blocks out everything else. That's their preferred sound. Like I said in a previous video, when these speakers come tuned, they actually come tuned to what that company wants them to sound like. They give you like the higher end companies like Sony JBL and stuff like that. They give you maybe a three two five band EQ because they really don't want you messing with their sound that much because they put a lot of work into it sounding like that. So once they give you an EQ to mess with, man, you start doing things that you want to do and you know it's not their sound and then you might start complaining so in the sony aspect we get a three band eq right there and you can see where i've kind of twerked it <laughs> twerked tweaked it a little bit but if we go back into that menu you got your clear audio plus which basically disengages everything else and actually turns on mega bass but if we go into here we can go into live sound which gives it kind of a um almost like a uh, more of a sound stage. It, pro it projects instruments and voices a little bit more. So they do give you sound effects here. And then you can go into, oh, that's it. I thought there was a DJ mode. There is no DJ mode in here. Oh yeah, there it is. There's a DJ effect. So you can go in here and go into the isolator and uh, the flanger and stuff like that and play around and just make your music sound awful. But that's what Sony gives you as far as the app. Now, once we get into the JBL side of things, you can see here, everything is laid out for you nice and easy on the front page. Once again, you only get a three band EQ because JBL is very protective of their signature sound. Uh, but they do let you mess with it a little bit because they give you this EQ and then you can see that toggle shows up to where you can turn it off or on. A lot of times, you know, people will complain about, you know, the, the highs and mids in, in, the, in this Boombox 3. So what I do sometimes is I'll just kind of bring it down like halfway to maybe both of them or just the one, the the, uh, the treble. And you know, I get a nice warmer sound when it comes to the JBL Boombox 3. But typically I do have it on their flat EQ because I think it sounds great, especially when I'm working out in the home gym. But that's really all you're gonna get with this JBL app. They don't give you any battery care features or anything else except party boost. They do let you connect via party boost here. But I gotta be honest with you, both of them sound really good coming right out of the box once you actually kind of just warm them up and break them in. They sound fantastic. Fantastic. So having a robust app for a Bluetooth speaker, it's not always necessary in my opinion, especially when you start climbing up to the range of speakers like this. Now we get to dig off into the Sony XG500 speaker booty. It is right here and there's a whole lot going on in there, man. You got your party connect button, your battery care button, 
uh, the light button to cycle your lights on and off. And then you have your DC input. Yes, it still has a DC input, which is good and bad for some people. It just depends on who you are. Some people like to do DC. That way you can kind of power it up via your car or RV or something like that. Uh, I prefer AC just because I'm always, you know, around an AC outlet. Then you got your USB A charging out, and then you got your USB charging out. But this one also plays a, uh, a memory stick, so you can put your uh, your files in there and play it that way. Or you can use the aux in to actually play your music, like from an MP3 player or from your phone. But here's where Sony starts kicking JBL's ass once again. This can also be used as a guitar amp, or even almost like karaoke, man. And that's why they have those DJ effects with the uh, the flanger and stuff inside of the app you got your separate volume here for your guitar or your microphone whichever you're using because it plugs in right there via that 6.2 i think it's 6.2 but then you got that little button right there to let uh, let it know that you're doing a guitar but another place where sony is kicking jbl's butt is they've included a microphone into this thing that way when you're playing your music and i fa actually found myself doing this in the house you're playing your music, jamming your tunes, or you know, a lot of times I'm watching interviews or something like that, and my phone will ring, or I'll need to call someone, and I'm expecting to just pick up my phone or put it on speaker, but it's already connected to this speaker. And it just starts ringing or whatever through the speaker. And I'm like, oh, I can just talk. I don't have to, you know, do all this anymore. So that's very convenient. And they actually work pretty good. I mean, nobody's really ever complained about if I sound bad or anything like that. So Sony has kind of thrown in everything but the kitchen sink as far as what you can put inside of a Bluetooth speaker here. Now we can delve into the Boombox 3 speaker booty. As soon as I get it open, there it is. And they have minimized everything, man. They've taken a lot of stuff out when you compare it to the Boombox 2 meaning they've gone to AC uh, input right there. So you get this one cable that's just an AC plug and all that hardware that comes in that DC brick, uh, it's actually inside of the speaker. And that's part of what makes it heavier along with the added subwoofer, which we'll get into in just a second. But then you got your, uh, your service and your input right there for uh, charging and uh, uh, playing files and stuff. And then they still give you the DC, I'm sorry, the 3.5 millimeter input. And that's what I use when I'm playing it outside in the gym. I just kind of run this from my TV into this speaker and it plays lovely. Love having that sound outside. But let's talk about drivers now. And this is where JBL is killing it, bruh, because they have added a dedicated subwoofer to the JBL Boombox 3. They got two dynamic, range drivers here and then they put two tweeters on top of them which is what's in all the other speakers it's usually just four speakers you got a dynamic range and then you have some tweeters possibly some tweeters and then you have the radiators on the side but they spread that out and then put a nice big racetrack uh, subwoofer a dedicated subwoofer right in the middle of that thing so you do get more sound you just get more sound you get the same amount of bass you're going to get out of a boom box too but you're definitely going to get more sound this is actually louder than what you get in the boom box too and it's actually clearer and brighter than what you would get in a boom box too so it's definitely more capable than a boom box too and it's a thousand times more capable than what you're going to get with the sony xg500 the sony xg500 sony's done their thing in here they give you the two dynamic ranges with the the tweeters and that's it but this thing is super Super soft okay they they just focus on softness this is a soft sound signature and that is literally all it's capable of you do get nice sound overall but it doesn't have a bunch of range you know you, you can, it's it's almost like a one-trick pony when it comes to sound now on the subject of sound we got to get down to the part of the video where you guys get the answers to the questions you all came here to find out but do they jam though
Guys, one thing I did forget to mention when I was talking about build quality was IP ratings. That is super important, especially when you're taking your speaker on the go with you, especially in water too. So uh, that's where JBL actually wins the competition because it's IP67 rated, which means you can take it to the pool, the ocean or whatever, and you're gonna be fine. You can actually ingress it in water and submerge it and it's gonna come out still playing music just fine. Also with dust, it's dust resistant. But the Sony XG500 is actually just IP66, which is a good rating, but don't expect to submerge that thing, especially for a while, and have it coming out, you know, clean. <laughs> it's not gonna go well for you. But you are protected from strong, uh, strong jets of water aiming at the speaker. So don't worry about that. And you do have a little bit of dust protection with the Sony as well. But in the case of sound quality and music, that's all personal preference. I told you that I actually prefer the Sony uh, inside. Uh, well, I, it's not that I prefer the Sony inside, it's just that it has a great warm and dull sound signature, if that's what you want to call it. it I just like it indoors. It's a great indoor performer. Outdoors, ugh, I don't really feel like it is an outdoor performer at all. Uh, but the JBL, on the other hand, it shines bright. And when I say bright, I mean it has a bright sound signature, which can be brought down a little bit if you're not into that, but it can perform everywhere else. It can perform inside the house. It will literally rattle your walls inside of the house. And if you take it outside, you still have this nice boomy effect, but you're also getting that clarity with the highs and the mids, should you be having a pool party or a gathering or something like that, especially when you're at a place like a park or a beach. But that's my opinion, man, and I'm entitled to it. So y'all can light me up in the comments if you want to. I don't really care. I got both speakers, so it is what it is. <laughs> Either way, it's time for you to stop, you know, nitpicking and stuff, man, and just pick a doggone speaker. And you know what I always say, I'm no expert in this kind of stuff, but what I do know is if it jams, turn it up. <laughs>